So let's talk about height, one of the most requested topics. You might be thinking, another height video? Really? It's a topic surrounded by a ton of misinformation and frankly, a lot of desperation. If you've searched this topic before, you've probably seen the endless clickbait. Do these five stretches to grow six inches? Or the secret food that reopens growth plates? Most of it is garbage, impractical, scientifically flimsy, based on anecdotal bro science, and designed to give you hope without actually giving you real, actionable truth. This video is going to be for people who are still growing, puberty, or recently out of it. So, what is the goal? When people mention height, they talk about two major factors, genetics and environment. First off, it has never been proven how much of your height comes from either. You might argue, but, but studies show height is around 80% genetics. Those are heritability studies, one of the most abused statistics in all science. It means, in a given population, how much of the variation between individuals can be explained by genetic variation. If height is 80% heritable, that doesn't mean 80% of your height is genetic. It means, in the studied population, 80% of differences in height could be linked to genetic differences. For you to actually measure how much genetics influence height, you'd have to take a randomized controlled group and give them the exact same environment from when they were in the womb until they've grown. And that still fails because it ignores epigenetics, which again is influenced by the environment of your parents and grandparents. That's why it's very hard to predict your final height. You might end up being way taller than your parents or actually the opposite. We're going to talk about the one single actual goal of height maxing because it's the most important concept here. The real achievable goal is this. To ensure your growth plates stay open and active for as long as possible and get the most out of that period. How will that happen? Let me explain. Your bones don't just grow everywhere. They grow from specific areas which we all know are called the growth plates. These are areas of cartilage at the ends of your long bones where new bone tissue is created. As long as these plates are open, you still have the potential to grow. Once they fuse, that's it. Natural height increase stops. So your entire strategy should revolve around one thing, optimizing everything to ensure those growth plates do their job for as long as possible. That means providing your body with the ideal building materials and hormonal signals. Puberty is essentially hormone-driven transformations. The key ones are HGH, IG, F1, testosterone, and estrogen. First off, HGH and IGF1. HGH is the primary anabolic hormone for linear growth. It's released from your pituitary gland, primarily during deep sleep, but it doesn't directly make you grow. It goes to your liver and tells it to produce IGF-1, which goes to the growth plates and stimulates the cartilage cells to multiply and create new bone. No IGF-1, no growth. It's that simple. Next, we have testosterone and estrogen. While they are essential for muscle, bone density, and puberty-related changes, they are also the hormones that eventually signal the growth plates to fuse. Estrogen is the primary hormone that signals the growth plates to fuse, not testosterone. Estrogen. This is why girls who have an earlier rise in estrogen typically stop growing sooner than boys, and both males and females produce estrogen. In fact, in males, testosterone is often converted into estrogen in fat tissue. This is why it's important to avoid endocrine disruptors or visceral fat that can cause hormonal imbalances. You should maximize the production of HGH, IGF-1, and avoid anything that would cause a premature or excessive spike in your estrogen levels. Now, how do you actually do that? Through optimized lifestyle choices. This is where we get into nutrition, sleep, and lifestyle in general. Food gives you the building blocks and the signaling molecules for everything we just talked about. You are literally building a skeleton, so the raw materials matter. And we're not talking about just eat healthy. We're talking about all nutrient sufficiency. We know calcium is the literal brick of your bones. It's the mineral that is the bone. So why wouldn't you be eating the best sources of calcium I'm not going to mention every micronutrient you need. You don't need to be tracking every nutrient you get. You just need to eat high-quality nutrient-dense foods, and you'll get everything you need with all the right cofactors. Your focus should be mainly animal-based. Get high-quality grass-fed meats, including organ meats like liver, which gives you every nutrient you need for growth. 
wild fish, pastured eggs, eat the yolks, blood, seasonal fruits, and raw dairy. That's it. Then you need to make sure you get enough sun exposure for vitamin D3, as it is essential for calcium absorption. The takeaway is to focus on a nutrient-dense, protein-rich diet with little to no anti-nutrients because anti-nutrients like oxalates pull calcium out of your bones. You also need to understand that vitamin K2 is found almost exclusively in grass-fed animal fats, specifically butter, egg yolks from pastured chickens, and hard cheeses. This is a key reason to prioritize quality animal products. You can have all the calcium in the world, but if it doesn't go to your bones and teeth, it's useless. And that is K2's job. You should avoid processed foods and processed seed oils like soybean and canola. This is common sense. They don't provide building blocks. They create chronic inflammation, insulin spikes, and actually disrupt your hormonal balance. The next factor is sleep. This is very important and also abused by a lot of you. Sleep is not passive. It is an active anabolic state. Over 70% of your daily HGH is released during deep, slow-wave sleep. If you're cutting your sleep short to play a video game or scroll through TikTok, you are literally robbing your body of its primary growth hormone. How much should I sleep? There's this modern mindset, oh, you need to sleep eight hours. You need to sleep as much as your body needs. Ideally, that means not having to wake up with an alarm. And if you have to wake up early for some reason, then go to bed early. Stabilize your circadian rhythm, which in turn optimizes hormone release. Keep cortisol levels low by living a non-stressful lifestyle. Chronic stress elevates cortisol. High cortisol is catabolic, meaning it breaks things down. It disrupts sleep, lowers IGF-1 production, and increases inflammation. The goal is stimulus, not breakdown. Finally, let's address some myths. If you see this advice, ignore it. Sprinting and jumping maxes growth. False. No specific movement, like high-impact sprinting and jumping, has ever been scientifically proven to force the growth plates to grow more. Sprinting does boost HGH as an acute stress response. The body responds to systemic hormonal signals, not acute mechanical stress. I mentioned that HGH doesn't directly make your bones grow. It's IGF-1. Intense exercise spikes cortisol. Chronically high cortisol suppresses IGF-1 production. So, you will get a small HGH pulse from sprinting, but if you're chronically stressed, you're crashing your overall IGF-1 levels, the very hormone you need for growth. The sleep comparison is laughable. Prioritizing sleep is the key. Don't listen to these delusional mother telling you to sacrifice your sleep. The Wolf's Law argument. Wolf's Law states that bone adapts to the load placed on it, which is true for increasing density. But this applies to mature bone and bone remodeling, not linear growth driven by the growth plates during development. Wolf's Law has nothing to do with making your bones longer. If you're 15 years old and sprinting, of course you are still developing and will still continue to grow. But the problem with this is, you'll start linking something to something that didn't even help. But, but it was because of sprinting. Yeah, it just happened that you were still developing. Another wild claim is Maasai jumping will make you taller. This is a different level of retarded. The Maasai aren't tall because of jumping. The media usually portrays different things from the actual reality. Stop believing documentaries made for clueless tourists. Not all the Nilotic tribes jump, but they're still tall. The media usually shows very specific minorities to try and showcase their cultures. It's more like they give a performance. It's ceremonial, not a growth hack. On normal days, you won't find them just jumping up and down. Hanging from a bar, stretching, or inversion boots will add inches to your height. The growth plates are not designed to respond to pulling forces like hanging. They are highly sensitive to hormonal signals, not physical pulling. You cannot stretch a growth plate. Hanging may temporarily decompress your spine, but it does not and cannot stimulate long bone growth. So, for the love of logic, stop hanging until your shoulders pop, thinking it will make you taller. Fasting boosts HGH, so it will make you grow. This is one of the most dangerous myths for a developing teen. The logic is this. Oh bro, studies show that a three-day fast increases HGH, so I should fast to get taller. It's true that HGH rises during a prolonged fast. 
This is a protective mechanism to preserve muscle tissue and mobilize fat stores for energy. Your body is literally in survival mode. And in survival mode, it shuts down the most expensive processes like growth. Your IGF-1 levels also plummet because your body cannot afford to build new cartilage when it's struggling to fuel your organs. Growth is anabolic. Fasting is catabolic. Take Grow Taller supplements. Save your money, bro. That's overhyped nonsense. There is no pill or proprietary blend that magically adds inches. Height is a multifactorial trait. Anyone selling you a secret is lying to you. What you need to do is provide the body with the fundamental nutrients and environment it needs and leave the rest to puberty. Steroids or anabolic drugs will make teens taller. Anabolic steroids accelerate puberty type effects and speed up growth plate maturation, which closes growth plates sooner. That means a kid using anabolic steroids can end up shorter than they would have been without them. There was a time when doctors tried higher dose androgens in some short children to accelerate growth velocity temporarily but it actually advanced bone age, which reduced final height, unless used in very controlled specialist contexts. So, the Jim Coper's idea of steroids now, taller later, is complete garbage. If you're wondering if you can reopen your growth plates, no. Once they're fused, they're fused. Once the growth plate is fully ossified, the cartilage is gone. It becomes solid bone. You cannot reverse this process. Any supplement or protocol claiming to do so is bullshit. The strategies in this video are for individuals who are still in their growth phase. If your plates are closed, the conversation shifts to making peace with your height or getting a limb lengthening surgery. Plate closure is a process, not a single event. It typically happens between ages 14 to 19 for most individuals, but it varies. The only way to know for sure is through an X-ray of the wrist and hand which can determine your bone age. If you're serious about knowing your potential, get an X-ray. This isn't some 30-day challenge. I'm not sure if you expected something different. This is about building the healthiest possible version of you throughout your entire development phase. Don't expect miracle inches overnight. If you're already healthy and not deficient, the gains from lifestyle are subtle but cumulative. Better posture, stronger bones, fuller frame, and if you were undernourished, real improvements in growth, or even term-induced catch-up growth. The prize here isn't just a few millimeters. It's switching from could have been to I did everything I could. That's real. This is the natural way. If you want more dives like this, that's what the Patreon community is for. Try improving what you can and make peace with what you can't. Thanks for watching.